Costa Rica, a land of natural beauty, majestic mountains, lush vegetation, and picturesque beaches, a prehistoric land where nature and man collide. A land that reveals a truth of God to those who listen. This summer, our group of 13 Americans journeyed to the impoverished Pacific coastal town of Playa Azul, Costa Rica. Iglesia Biblica, a pillar of the tiny Costa Rican community and our tether for service for the days to come. A small church referred to as the Oasis by the locals had a stunning campus. Every morning we woke up to macaws flying overhead, their scarlet feathers a reminder of why we had come to rural Costa Rica. The team that served us as we served them was headed up by Pastor Chesty and led by up-and-coming Pastor Alvaro and his wonderful wife, Christina. Christina and active church member Adolfo prepared amazing meals for us daily with joy in their eyes and true servants' hearts. David, Justin, and Diego would guide us in the construction projects in the days to come. Day 1 we started the day with breakfast, devotions, and worship. Then the team of Iglesia Biblica described the projects that we would take on. The first was to continue construction on the church led by Alvaro and Justin. The second was to encourage the community by constructing, painting, and setting up large cement flower pots on tire stands which was led by Diego. The third was to help the community by creating a sidewalk in a part of the town that was prone to flooding during the rainy season which was led by David. Finally, we would provide support for an afternoon VBS with the local kids. After a quick briefing, we jumped into action by splitting into three groups for a few hours of work. After this, Alvaro had planned an adventure for us. We piled in a few vehicles and drove just a few minutes down the road. Alvaro had planned a croc tour on the river that snaked its way around our host village. We boarded the boat waiting for us and set off. The adventure took us down the tropical Rio Grande de Tiercoles. We floated our way through the mountains that towered across the horizon. We saw birds, lizards, and a prehistoric looking beast named Osama bin Laden, a nearly 17 foot long male crocodile. This deceptively placid bull was called in by our guide. They had hand-fed him fish and even picked up his impressively intimidating head. We took photos and videos of him and then continued on our journey to see several other crocs, including a baby croc that was less than a foot in length. It was an impressive dichotomy to the giant we had just seen. The tour ended with a grateful team, even more willing to serve. Team 1 leaped into action that week, working on the church building. They mudded and sanded the ceiling in preparation for painting. They also worked tirelessly on mortaring the interior and exterior walls of the church. Team 2 built cement pads on which to place two recycled tires. The tires were then filled with rock, cement, and rebar to which an 80-pound cement flower pot was set. They then planted a small tree inside for the community to enjoy. Team 3 put a sidewalk in for the village. This was to help during the rainy season. This particular section of the road would often flood, and a dry place for the villagers to walk was needed. All the teams mixed mortar and cement. Teams 2 and 3 would go and gather truck beds and wheelbarrows full of gravel to use in the making of the cement. 
Team 3 would then throw it in the mixer, pour, scree, and brush the sidewalk. By the end of the trip, the progress on the ceiling and the walls of the church was evident. It had drastically decreased the work needed to finish the church. The flower pots that adorned the streets of Playa Azul and the progress made on the sidewalks, despite a one-day power outage, left the walkways at a state of near completion. The week of hard work had seemed to pay off. In the middle of the week, an idea was proposed. Our team wanted to engage with the community, so we started a prayer walk. Alvaro guided our team through the streets as we prayed for Iglesia Biblica, the local residents of Playa Azul, the local school, and the various sections of the town as we passed through. We prayed that God would use Iglesia Biblica and allow us to be able to bless them and further their mission to bring God to Playa Azul, Jaco, and Costa Rica. We even had the amazing opportunity to stop and pray for a family outside of their house. In the afternoon from 4 to 6 on Tuesday through Thursday, we assisted the church in a VBS for the younger kids. We started with songs and then had a brief message for the kids about Abraham, Moses, and Noah, and how we can see God through them. Then we split the kids into two groups, the younger kids and the older kids. While one group did crafts, the others did games, and then they switched. Once crafts and games were finished, the kids gathered for a couple more songs and then snacks before heading home. Go, go, go. The first day, we started with 26 kids, and on the last day, we had 46 kids and were running out of craft supplies. We were told this was amazing because Playa Azul only had about 60 kids living there. God was there. After VBS on Thursday, Pastor Chesby invited us to his house for a church Bible study. Here we had the opportunity to hear how the church worked and to hear what they believed and struggled with in their own lives. It offered us valuable insight into who God is through the eyes of Costa Ricans. Our last day, Friday, in Costa Rica was a recovery day before we headed home. We started the day by packing up and heading up the mountain near Carrara National Park, where most of our team was dropped off near a hiking trailhead. Those who didn't want to hike continued up the mountain to enjoy Costa Rican coffee at a cafe at the top of the mountain. Those of us that stayed to hike at the trailhead embarked on an arduous hike that was led by David. We hiked through the dense rainforest down the side of a mountain, which eventually led to Menentiel de Agua Viva, a large waterfall that cascaded down several hundred feet of mountainside. The mist from the waterfall was refreshing after our hot and humid hike. After taking in the view, we turned around and headed back. This part of the hike was especially difficult as we now had to hike back up the side of the humid mountain we had just traversed. Over an hour later, we had made it back to the beginning of the trailhead and were greeted by our team members that decided to go to the cafe. Together, the few of us that made it up the mountain first, along with these other team members, cheered on our remaining hiking team members as they summited the side of the mountain. After a short lunch, we split into two groups again. One group went ziplining, while the other went ATV. We ziplined through the mountains from treetop to treetop while the others raced through off-roading trails through Costa Rican jungle and beaches. Both groups spent their time bonding with our Costa Rican brothers in Christ. Finally, the day came to an end at a beautiful beach in Hawkeye. What have we learned? What new aspect of God's character had we witnessed? Had 
who lived and served with joy this week? Costa Ricans have a saying. Pura vida. They use it to greet one another and to say goodbye. The phrase literally means pure life. It's a testament to their friendly and laid-back culture of their country. But our Costa Rican brothers and sisters in Christ used it with a deeper meaning. Pura Vida meant more than just the slogan's intended, friendly, hang-loose, pure-life denotation. It expressed something similar, yet distinctly different. As Christians, what is pure life? Who is pure life? A godly life serving the Creator who gives eternal life. So what did we learn? What new aspect of God's creation did we witness? We learned that God is Pura Vida. He is pure life to those that seek Him. 1 Chronicles 16 verse 24 says, Declare His glory among the nations, His marvelous deeds among the peoples. Had we lived and served with joy that week? Costa Rica revealed the truth of God to our group of 13 Americans that week who chose to listen. Through God's people, His pure life brings hope.